Migration control is what uh, was James likes to call it, or the airy. Uh, my name is Stefan Tabor, and you've come all the way from Byron down in the Sabi Sands, three and a half thousand miles north to Kenya, where I'm sitting above the Masai Mara Game Reserve. And uh, I'm about to show you a few of the cameras that we have. And we have some static cameras placed around the place. We have uh, them on the most prominent river crossings around, and this afternoon has offered up its fair share of prizes for us. Now, if I could ask that we go to cul-de-sac crossing so that I can show you what we've got there. Look at this. We've got some action going on here, two different sets of action in, in, a, in, 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 uh, in fact. We've got a dead wildebeest in the foreground, but what is active at the moment is in the background there. I want to go and see what is actually going on over here. I don't actually know. Oh, it's another dead wildebeest. Hmm. That means that there's been a crossing somewhere, and what's happened is wildebeest have got stuck somewhere. I think these wildebeest are, I don't think it happened today, just judging from the level of um, bloatedness on these carcasses, I actually think that this probably happened yesterday or the day before. And uh, they've now floated down, and what's happened is these crocodiles have been able to tuck in and just look at this giant crocodile going for the soft belly on this uh, on this wildebeest carcass. For those of you that are a bit squeamish, if this crocodile does manage to break into this carcass, we probably will see uh, the insides of this wildebeest, and it, it may or may not be something that you want to watch. So just you know, uh, expect the unexpected here. This crocodile is busy feeding. What it's done is uh, either consciously or subconsciously, it's put this wildebeest carcass onto a mud flat. And that has allowed it to gain some purchase, and that will allow it to leverage itself and its weight um, onto the carcass. So crocodiles can only open and shut their jaws. They can't move their jaws from side to side. And this makes it very difficult to chew off pieces of meat. So what they do, generally speaking, is use their bodies to rotate in a circle called a death roll. That dismembers and disembowels prey. And that then breaks off chunks of meat that they then stick their head out of the water and swallow whole. They don't chew anything, relying on their gastric juices to break down the protein and the bone and the hair and everything else into more manageable chunks, or at least into a fluid that they then can absorb in their quite enlarged uh, small intestine. And then it moves through their quite small uh, large intestine, if that makes any sense. So meat eaters have a fairly large stomach, enabling them to bolt food down. They then have a fairly large, large intestine and a fairly short, short intestine. Um, and the reason for that is that meat goes off and creates gas and creates nasty toxins and so what they try to do is um, is make sure that uh, that they pass this putrefying meat through their system as quickly as possible and that is why most of your carnivores have such a short small intestine but anyway that is n now we've, what we've got is a yellow billed stalk that has come up and what the yellow billed stalk is doing is quite interesting the yellow billed stalk hunts by feeling for prey with its beak and it is attracted to the wildebeest carcass because fish will be attracted to the wildebeest carcass specifically catfish and other small invertebrates and they will then be trying to feed on the wildebeest carcass and that bird is then fishing for them. What is this crocodile going to go and do? Let us see what is going on here. What is this? He's just giving his little wildebeest teddy bear some love. What are you going to do, big guy? Is he going to bite in? Quite often what happens is as soon as these crocodiles start to feed, it'll start to bring in other crocodiles and it becomes a bit of a feeding frenzy. And I think that even just the shaking around, wow, look at the power of this thing. Dragging that carcass. There we go. You saw how he lifted its head. Now this wildebeest is actually floating free and is now off of the mud bank. That crocodile will definitely follow this wildebeest. It's going to take some time, though. So why don't we send you over to James quickly and see what he's got for you.